Dues, the large format printer that Bamboo fans have wanted this whole time? Well, I'm going to go over this printer today in a way that hopefully people who aren't fully submersed in the world of 3D printing will understand to better educate you on if this printer could be right for you or not. We're going to start with price and for $1,500 you get the H2S with the AMS combo, which I think is going to be the most popular one. You can get it without the combo for $1,250. And for $2,100, you get the laser module, which I don't have. So the dimensions of this machine are big. It's a big machine. It's about 25 inches tall without the AMS, 35 with it, and 20 inches deep without the spool holder, 23 inches with the spool holder, and that's without a poop chute because whatever one you make is gonna be different. And it's a little bit over 20 inches wide. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to find a spot to put it because it is very big. Just like the outside of this printer, the inside is very large. So just like the outside of this machine, the inside is very large as well, coming in with a build volume of 340 by 320 by 340 millimeters, which in inches is about 13 and a half by 12 and a half by 13 and a half. If you're into cosplay, this is big enough to do most full-size helmets in one go. I tried to find some things around my garage to get like a, a size of visual uh, here's a little tough box that i have that you can see fits with no problem even with the handle up and i guess something more verifiable size wise is a 16 ounce can of red bull that looks absolutely tiny inside of this printer moving around the inside of the printer briefly you have the chamber heater and a fan on the left up here you have one of the cameras there's three total and on the back wall where that grate is you have another fan and exhaust fan as well as your carbon filters and up top here is your print head with a 0.4 nozzle from the factory. So the H2S uses its cameras not only for time lapse, but it also can use AI to detect your print failures, like uh, spaghetti blobs and all that stuff, which comes in handy. Another thing the H2S does that I think is pretty cool is controls the chamber temperatures depending on what type of fulfillment you pick. So this is POA, I'm just printing a Benchy, and you will see it pops the top vent open right here to help vent out the extra heat in the chamber it also opens the vents on the back to pull in cooler air so you don't get heat creep messing up your prints and if it's a higher temperature it'll keep those closed which is also good all right so let's set some expectations with print speed for people coming into the hobby for context this little boat took 15 minutes to print i could go and throw a whole bunch of numbers around like 10,000 millimeters per second acceleration and all that but when you're just trying to figure this stuff out that's really confusing so i figured some prints and times would help be a better visual for context this poop chute and waste container took three and a half hours and this charizard skull took about seven and a half i think around seven the more intricate or bigger the pieces the longer it's going to take essentially which i feel like it's pretty common sense, but again, coming into this, you have a whole bunch of numbers thrown at you that get really confusing really fast, and it's kind of hard to judge the times. All right, so here's that Charizard skull up close, and the quality came out really nice. It has some wisping and some marks where the supports came off, but all that can be taken care of in the slicer settings. I just uploaded it and hit print, and I'm really happy with how it came out, which I feel like I should be for almost a $1,500 printer. And the last thing we'll talk about here is the AMS. I mean, there's not super much to talk about. It's a, it holds your filament. That's where the multi-filament loads into the machine. It holds four spools. It does dry your filament, but it won't dry it while you're printing. It's all controlled over here on the screen. There's a little tab for the AMS, which you can see here. And you saw I had four in. The red one's not loaded up, but you can edit everything. You can change the settings. If you use the bamboo spools, it has RFID chips uh, that it reads and it'll do all this for you. You don't have to touch anything. And here I just have it start drying. You'll see the lights up here start flashing, indicating that it's drying. But yeah, that's the AMS. So that's the HUS in a nutshell. It's a great printer. I like it a lot. It was easy to set up. It's easy to print with. It looks nice. It looks more like an appliance to me than a 3D printer. Like, 
It wouldn't look out of place in like a home office or something. It's just too big for my home office. Because of the price point, I'm not sure I would recommend it as like a first printer for somebody because that's a lot to hop into a hobby. On the other hand, if it was in their budget and they wanted it, I wouldn't say no just because of how easy everything is to get going and start printing. So this is my first long format video. It's probably not going to be edited great. I mean, I'm probably not doing great, but I enjoy making videos. So if this helped you out in any kind of way, uh, consider liking and subscribing or let me know in the comments what I could have done better to put more info out about this or for videos in the future.